Welcome to Great Chefs of the World, a culinary survey featuring premier chefs from around the globe. The appetizer comes from the Tuscany region of Italy. Maria Salcuni cooks tomato soup, thickened with three-day-old bread and served with fried calamari. The main course is prepared in Paris. Michelle Rostang poaches a large piece of veal, then roasts it in the oven. It is served with a rich green pea risotto. Dessert is served in Vienna, Austria. Meinrad Neunkirchner does a flourless confection of chocolate bars served with coffee-flavored sabayon and cherry confit. Tuscan town, San Cassiano di Val de Pesa, restaurant La Tenda Rosa, offers the cooking of Maria Salcuni. She learned to cook from her family in Salerno, and the home cooking roots can be seen in her food. Simplicity and great product characterize Tuscan cooking, evident here with tomato soup and calamari. The soup is started with a little olive oil. Pressed garlic is added. Vine ripened tomatoes are peeled and seeded. Pomodoro. Lo scottiamo leggermente, lo peliamo. Mi manca. The tomato pieces are added. Sì, 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 no, no, Fernanda, prepara pure. Cioè, sarebbe un lavoro... She says that she has not seeded the last two tomatoes. Normally, she would. The tomatoes cook for about 30 minutes. One of the factors that really distinguishes this dish is the use of this three-day-old Tuscan sourdough bread. Slices of it will go into the tomato mixture and will ultimately redefine the word soup. Pane tagliato non troppo massiccio, tagliato abbastanza sottile. Ecco. Basil leaves are removed from water, drained and torn into pieces that go into the tomatoes. Spengo il pomodoro, è già passata la mezz'ora, mettiamo del basilico, del basilico spezzettato grosso. The bread slices go in. Il pane dentro, il pane. No, questo non ce lo mettiamo troppo duro. More olive oil. Ecco. 
The mixture is set aside to allow the bread to soak up some of the juices. Meanwhile, the calamari is started. Grapeseed oil, with its incredibly high temperature tolerance, is used to fry. The calamari, head and body separated, are coated in semolina flour. That's the flour usually used in making pasta. The chef says it will result in crunchier calamari. Infarinati molto bene perché rimangono più croccanti. Uso questa farina perché essendo granellosa, essendo grossa, il pesciolino rimane più eh, perfetto. punto giusto, via. Comincia a fumare. The calamari are cooked fairly quickly and drained. They are seasoned with a little salt. The tomato and bread mixture, which was, by the way, constantly worked to break down the bread by an assistant, is ready to serve. To avoid confusion, we will not refer to it as soup. Restaurant Michel in Paris is the domain of Michel Rostang. He grew up cooking and represents the fifth generation of chefs in his family. He grew up in the classic French culinary rubric, so has a passion for seasonal products and new items. Here is poached and roasted veal knuckle in braising juice. For this dish, we will carry Marc Cosnard de Closet's translation. First thing we do is blanch it, which is let it boil in some water. Carrot, onion, celery, and leek will be added to the poaching liquid.
Voilà, notre jarret a bouilli. So now our veal has boiled, it's blanched. He changes the water and adds the vegetables. Un peu de persil, que de persil pour mettre un bouquet garni. Voilà. Le fond de braisage. This is cooked slowly for two and a half to three hours. So first I took the uh, poached veal knuckle out of the poaching liquid and it actually cooled in the poaching liquid. Now putting it in this braising pan, then I'm making a braising sauce with little bits of veal which have cooked for a long time and vegetables that were used in the poaching sauce. I'm going to strain this out to make my braising juice. It's very important not to use veal bones to make this juice but to only use pieces of veal meat. It's important that the veal juice that we're using should be so tasty you can just eat it with a spoon. Now we baste the veal with the uh, braising juice. We'll put it in the oven for about 20 minutes, basting it often. At 375 degrees. After 20 minutes in the oven, you can see the veal is nice golden brown. It's completely cooked. This is our cooking juice. Which we're going to season. Now we strain the cooking juice into the serving platter. So we're going to prepare some leek green baskets. What we, what we do is we take the leek greens, roll them around a mold. They've been blanched. We roll it around this mold. And then we're going to fr deep fry them. The veal is served with risotto, which contains blanched peeled green peas, butter, pea paste, and canta cheese. And now we're going to peel the actual peas. Only in France. It's very, it takes a lot of patience to do this. Then we add the peeled peas to the risotto. A compound butter that was mixed with the pea paste is added. Also grated Kanta cheese, which is made in the Kanta region. It has a yellow color and piquant flavor. Well. The risotto is served in the leek leaf rounds.
So it's very soft, it's very moist. Because it was poached for a while, a long while actually, and then roasted for a little while. The chef de cuisine at Restaurant Academy in Vienna was Meinrad Neunkirchner when this was taped. A native of the city, he has also worked in Switzerland, Germany, France, notably at Tragro in Rouen, and Italy. His dessert features chocolate bars with sesame, white mocha milk, and sour cherry confit. The chef starts by explaining the mocha milk. Coffee beans are covered with milk and steeped for two days in the refrigerator. He notes that the milk has taken on some of the coffee color. It's strained. The milk is transferred to a pan and goes over heat. Meanwhile, egg yolks and sugar are combined. After the milk has come to a boil, it's poured into the yolk. It goes over warm water, is stirred until thickened, then strained and cooled. The chocolate bar is started by combining egg yolks and powdered sugar. It goes over warm water. He says, don't let the egg get too hot or it will scramble. Sie sehen, wenn die Masse ganz leicht schaumig ist, hier einen Esslöffel. A tablespoon of flour is added to the egg mixture. Das Mehl zu den Eiern. Deshalb das glatte Mehl, denn damit, wenn wir die Schokolade dazugeben, das Eigelb sich nicht absetzt. Berühren das. Jetzt, René, gießen wir die Schokolade durch ein Sieb dazu, dass sicherheitshalber ja keine Bröckel drinnen sind. Then melted dark chocolate is strained into the batter. Damit die Masse ganz, ganz glatt wird. Schnee geben Sie mal an, gell? Mhm. So, durchs feine Sieb, jetzt haben wir... Schokolade ganz aufgelöst. Und jetzt berühren wir vorsichtig die Schokolade mit der Eimasse. Sie sehen, es gibt eine dickcremige, kompakte Masse. 
sweet beaten egg whites are added. Ein Drittel der Masse drunter. Sie sehen, schön dick cremiger Schnee. The finished batter will go into an adjustable rectangular form in a pan lined with waxed paper. Jetzt füllen wir die Schokolademasse hinein. The batter is smoothed and sesame seeds are sprinkled on top. Bake at 325 for about 12 minutes. For presentation, the chocolate confection is cut into round shapes. The chef notes that the chocolate batter has not risen at all. Setzen die Scheibe in die Mitte. Mocha Sauce. The mocha flavored Sabayon. Powdered sugar. Sour cherry confit garnishes. 